Hi, it's Christina and we're talking test tips. And today we're gonna to talk about how to better understand why you miss certain questions. All right, we've talked about efficient practice before, but what does that really mean? Well, today we're talking about how to learn from your practice, especially when you get questions wrong. So I want you to think about it this way. Would you say that when you get a question correct, it means that you completely understand the topic? I mean, sure, sometimes, but other times it means that you understood enough to get the answer. So then what does it mean when you get a question wrong? What does that tell you? So think about how when you look at the individual questions, you have like a mental conversation with yourself that barely takes a second and maybe it goes something like, oh yes, this looks familiar, I know what to do. <laughs> or maybe it's more like, I recognize these words or this problem and I think I've done something like this before so I'm gonna go ahead and try that thing that I did last time and see if it works here, right? But what do you do when you come upon a question that you don't know or you don't recognize, then what do you do? And when you miss a question, what do you do? Well, maybe you look at the answers and the explanations, but what are you really looking for? Take for example, in math class, right? You study things by units, right? And that unit is broken up into several subtopics. And then your homework covers like one aspect of that topic. And then you have a quiz and it covers a couple of aspects of the topic. And then yes, when you take a test, it covers all the aspects of that topic that are covered in the unit. And yes, the questions are mixed up and you have to recall certain processes for certain questions, but they are all similar types of questions because they're all from the same unit. The ACT and SAT on the other hand have all kinds of questions all mixed up. And this means that you have to have some way of identifying the type of question that's being asked. You have to have some way to help you remember what to do. You have to recognize the type of problem and recall the correct process. This process is crucial when you miss questions, right? Because you have to figure out what went wrong. And then you have to figure out how, if you saw that question again, would you know what to do next time? So categorizing questions that you miss helps you study and recall how to do them later, right? And look, some people are natural categorizers. They naturally find similarities in questions and processes, whereas others have to do this more intentionally. So let's think about how you might categorize questions you miss within each section of the tests. So in the ACT English or the SAT writing language sections, we're talking about grammar concepts and effective writing. So let's keep it simple. Do you miss questions about specific grammar concepts like commas or are you missing big picture questions like when they ask you about the author's purpose? Okay, once you know what kinds of questions you're missing, then I want you to think about what do you need to do or change in order to get these questions correct? So for example, if you're missing a specific grammar concept like commas or semicolons, then you need to brush up on identifying independent and dependent clauses and which punctuation to use when. Moreover, if you're missing questions that ask you more about like the content of the passage, like redundancy, um, relevancy, or author's purpose, then you either need to slow down when you're reading the passage, or you just need to do a better job of comprehending what the passage is actually about. In the reading section on the test, students often struggle with a certain type of passage. Usually it's on a subject matter or in a style of writing that students aren't familiar with, or they struggle with a type of question. Now, if you're struggling with a type of passage, then remember that each passage requires you to focus on certain elements. So take a moment and review these mental tasks for the different reading passages in our blog post called How to Ace the ACT Reading Section. 
And these are particularly helpful when you find yourself reading a passage that does not interest you. As for getting more or certain questions correct, you need to be sure that you can restate the question in your own words. Then see if you can try answering it in your own words before you look at the answer choices. And sometimes it is not possible to do this and that's okay. Sometimes we need those answer choices so that we can use process of elimination. But remember that one aspect, phrase or word is enough to eliminate an answer choice. And lastly, always know what you are looking for or where you are looking before you return to the passage. And there is never going to be a question that is worth the time it takes to reread the entire passage. In the math section, you can either think about the type of question by topic or approach. And when I say approach, I mean that some students find it helpful to categorize the question based on what they actually have to do, like write an equation, draw a graph, um, solve, factor, or even just use their calculator. Or you can think about it by topic like algebra one or geometry, kind of similar to how you would study for a math final exam. In the end, you need some sort of system. You look at a question, identify it as being from a certain topic, and therefore you know what to do or you look at a question and then you remember what approach to use. The key is that it is not about how many questions or practice tests you complete. It is about how much you pay attention to which ones you got correct and which ones you got wrong. So from now on, when you get a question wrong, I want you to make a note of why you got it wrong, what you plan to do differently next time, and make all your practice count. All right, happy practicing.